By this point, you all should know how I feel about the first two seasons of Fortnite Chapter 2. Season 1 started out with a very high level of potential, with the first 10 weeks or so being incredibly solid, but introduced Epic to some nasty habits and quickly tapered off in quality once delay after delay hit. For me, it went down in history as a season with barely enough content to fill the standard 10 weeks, despite going on for almost twice that. And then there's Chapter 2 Season 2. For me, Fortnite hit an all-time low with Season 2. In my opinion, it was the worst season in the history of Fortnite by far. It's not even close. The XP system was so broken as to be completely unusable from day one, yet despite the season once again dragging on for an excruciating 118 days, at no point did Epic ever so much as acknowledge the issue. The most obtrusive ad campaign to ever be put in a video game made me constantly mad every time I opened the map, the UI of the game continued to look worse and worse and become less user friendly, Epic was completely deaf to user feedback and refused to implement easy and basic quality of life improvements. I could write seven scripts on how much I detested everything one of my all time favorite games became in Chapter 2 Season 2. I've already made two videos covering the season, and at one point two more were planned, ideas I might revisit in the future, but right now my main goal is to lay out my mentality for everyone going into Chapter 2 Season 3. I was broken. As the servers went down, I was finally forced to swallow the pill that had been sitting on my desk for months. Despite playing almost a thousand matches and putting in over 170 hours, this would be the first time in the history of Fortnite I wouldn't complete a battle pass. Sure, I was excited for the next season, but at some point it gets kind of hard to get excited about being disappointed. Hard to get excited about another round of seemingly infinite delays, broken mechanics, and just emptiness. And then I checked Twitter. I'm just going to come right out and say this, I have never been more positively surprised by a Fortnite season. Let's start with the most basic. The lead up into Season 3 was fantastic. Season 2 ended with an admittedly awesome live event in which Midas used his Doomsday device to try and conquer the storm, but ultimately found no success, only making the problem much worse. In the ensuing chaos, the island was completely flooded, which is where we left off going into Season 3. Season 3 opens with, well, it opens with Midas being brutally killed by a shark, but besides that, it opens with the aftermath of that flood. This is going to be a theme I come back to several times before this video is over, but Season 3 just felt right. Like, they addressed so many problems with the previous two seasons that I hadn't even had the energy to realize were issues. The lobby was bright and interesting, a welcome reprise after the practical dungeon that was Season 2's lobby. They improved the battle pass for the better in so many ways. We finally saw the return of selectable styles, a system that was completely mutilated by the faction system of the first two seasons of Chapter 2. I mean, it wasn't quite the return to the full unlockable style system introduced in Chapter 1 Season 4, but at this point I've kind of come to accept that that's a pipe dream and selectable styles are here to stay. This was just a really solid battle pass overall. Honestly, this is one of the few battle passes ever where not only are there not really any skins I wouldn't wear, but several skins that I can actually see myself coming back to in the future. But the main thing that really cemented how I felt about this season was the changes they made to the map. This was by far the biggest map change we'd had since the start of Chapter 2, and it just struck so many chords. Up until Season 3, we were more or less exclusively given disjointed and sporadic map updates that pretty much came out of nowhere and had minimal apparent connection to the story. Finally, here we have the classic formula used all throughout Chapter 1 making its glorious return. A live event in the previous season caused immediate and usually temporary damage that ultimately led into the changes seen in the new season. It all just felt so right. The locations covered by No Sweat Insurance were still on the map, but were heavily adapted to the new flooded environment. All the locations not covered were completely consumed by the flood, and in their places, new POIs sprang up out of wreckage and scrap metal. And then there was the higher elevation portion of the map, left mostly unchanged. All the different areas of the map felt so distinct and carried its own identity, and yet still managed to maintain a level of cohesive theming that tied the entire map up in a nice little bow. By far the most important addition to Chapter 2 Season 3, however, the introduction of, oh, I don't know, updates? The flooded map was an awesome gimmick to spice up gameplay, but it also served as a mechanism to make sure the season was continually evolving. As the weeks went by, the water level lowered, re-revealing old locations and gradually returning the map to a more normal state of existence. 
The constantly changing landscape managed to invest me in the Chapter 2 map in a way that I honestly didn't think was possible. And this isn't to ignore the more typical updates either. The addition of cars in the later half of the season made sure you stayed interested whether you wanted to or not. Honestly though, I think the most impactful change in Epic's attitude towards updates was the return of regular LTM rotations. I genuinely believe that if Season 2 had implemented weekly rotations of old LTMs, my opinion of the season would be radically different. That's how much this change means to me. But wait, there's more. Season 3 saw yet another revamp to the XP system. As I mentioned previously, and in my Season 2 recap, and in the entire dedicated video I did on how the Season 2 XP system was broken beyond repair, the Season 2 XP system was broken beyond repair. Shockingly, the way you gain experience in Season 3 was changed pretty significantly. I'm not going to go too into detail here because I predict at some point in the not so distant future I'll be making an entire video on it, but to keep it short, the crux of this rework was the removal of the badge system and the introduction of quick challenges. Short, simple challenges you could do several of in a game, catch five fish, open a few chests, and sure they weren't worth much experience on their own, but the key feature here is that they can be done infinitely. This change, as well as limiting enlightened styles to only one skin and capping it at level 160, single-handedly transformed the Fortnite experience system from one of the worst to one of the best in its history. It wasn't perfect, sure, but it managed to bridge the gap between experience gained from challenges and experience gained from regular gameplay, making it possible for the first time ever to intuitively grind for levels. Season 3 even managed to vastly improve over the standards set for integration of sponsored content into the battle pass set by Season 2. We once again have a sponsored skin serving as the extra unlockable, but Aquaman felt much more at home in Season 3 than Deadpool ever felt anywhere in Season 2. It's done in such a way that if you didn't know this was a sponsored character, nothing would even seem out of the ordinary. Aquaman's location on the map was barely even branded in relation to Aquaman, and it was actually a really awesome POI that fit in with the theming of the season perfectly. Overall, it feels like the story of Fortnite was handled with much more respect than shown in the last two seasons. The entire world of Season 3 felt like an evolution of what was there previously. The box factory Meowsel settled in after being booted from his yacht developed into an entire cat-themed POI ran by his son. The agency, after the death of Midas, fell under new management and became the Authority, one of the last hubs of power for the now struggling Shadow organization. We were continually fed bits of lore over the course of the season, and while we might not have gotten a live event to cap it all off, I'm willing to forgive that in the wake of all this season did right. Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 3 was the first time in 246 days I got a chance to return to the Fortnite we left behind in Chapter 1. Saying I wanted Fortnite to be good again doesn't really do my point justice. I don't think Fortnite ever stopped being good. Even during Season 2, Fortnite remained one of my favorite games of all time. If my Fortnite tracker stats are to be believed, I maintained an hour and a half daily average playtime throughout that season. Nope. Fortnite never stopped being good. But for a while there, Fortnite stopped being Fortnite. Chapter 2 Season 3 was a great season. It had an amazing battle pass, one of my all-time favorite metas, a fantastic map to explore, introduced a new vehicle that's sure to go down as one of the best in the history of the game, made the Chapter 2 experience system the most useful it's ever been, and so much more. But above all that, for me at least, Season 3 allowed me to, for the first time in a long time, see a future for this game I could not only live with, but be excited for. And for that, I will always be grateful. The future of Fortnite is still very much uncertain, but I'm more excited than ever to see what's in store for my favorite Battle Royale. I guess we'll just have to wait until I take a look at Fortnite, Chapter 2, Season 4. But if you just can't wait to see some Season 4 content from me, why not check out my Season 4 live reaction up on the screen right now? And hey, if you did enjoy this video, why not drop a like and subscribe for more content just like this? While you're at it, why not share the video around with anyone you think might enjoy it? It helps out more than you can imagine. If you'd like to continue the discussion, links can be found in the description for my Discord server, which you should totally join, as well as all my other social media. Well, that's a wrap for this week, and as always, Thanks for watching.